to the verse-by-verse study of the book of Romans. We shall begin chapter 6 today. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it, live in it any longer? Recall back in the last chapter, chapter 5, verse 20, Paul noted that when, where there's sin and sin is increasing, be rest assured that God's grace and power will always increase more, that darkness can never overcome light. So Paul is asking a rhetorical question, which he does quite often. He uses a teaching tool. In fact, in the book of Romans, he uses these questions 70 different times. Paul has just spent the first five chapters of this book teaching us how to be saved by faith in and through Christ. Now he's going to turn the page, so to speak, and begin to teach us how to live out that new faith, that new life in Christ. He's going to tell us what that journey looks like. Now that the old self has died and we've been born again, that we are a new person in Christ with a new heart and a new spirit. In the book of Ezekiel, he puts it simply and beautifully. I will give you a new heart, in other words, a heart of Christ, and put a new spirit, the Holy Spirit, in you. Paul's point is that we are first justified, meaning that we're washed of our sins by God through faith. And then what comes next is a new life, a new beginning, a new relationship with God. And as this new life unfolds, this journey begins with restored access to Christ, we no longer carry this burden, this dirt, this bondage, this penalty of sin. It has been washed away. And this journey, which is called sanctification, is to be filled with this heart and this spirit that gives us new power over sin, as well as discernment to recognize and to reject it. And we have this ability to walk in this world with joy, peace, confidence, until the point where we're called to heaven, and that is called glorification. So here we have Paul rhetorically asking, should we continue to live in, live in sin? Should we take sin with us on this beautiful journey? Should we allow sin that hidden, that's hidden in our closet, so to speak, of our life? Should that continue to be part of our life? And he answers with an emphatic, resounding, by no means. Now, Paul is going to speak about sin and exactly what does that mean, though? So when we hear the term sin, what does it mean? The little Greek word for sin means it's an archer term, meaning missing the mark, missing the intended target. It also means taking the wrong path, a path that only leads to harm and destruction. Sin is an unwise choice. It is a choice that we somehow perceive has some short-term flesh gain, but it always, always has a guaranteed long-term pain. Sin is a choice. It includes all kinds of, of different sins. Lying, greed, dishonesty, narcissism, gossip, hatred, insensitivity, unkindness, immoral behavior, anger, jealousy, being unfaithful in relationships, pridefully arrogant, unforgiving, being judgmental, using vulgar language, the list goes on. Sin is just plain stupid because it leads to broken relationships, personal sadness and depression, and unfulfillment, a life full of headache and heartache. This is why God is so against sin, because of all the damage, not because he wants to restrict us, because he wants to free us from this pain. It's, 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 we're missing an abundant, fruitful life. Like any loving parent, it breaks the heart of God when his children make harmful, stupid choices that bring them only harm and brings harm to others. Now, Paul will continue with another question. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized, baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into also his death? 
here Paul is referencing both spiritual um, baptism and also physical baptism. Physical baptism was and is used as a symbol, is simply an important symbol of our sin being washed away and beginning that new life. When we're put into the water, that represents the death of the old person, the old sinful self. And when we're raised from the water, that symbolizes this cleansing and resurrection of new life. Paul is asking, since you have begun a new life that you've been dunked and are without sin and you've been raised, why would you begin that sinful life again? Why turn back to that filth of sin that only brings heartache and headache? That's his rhetorical question for us all to answer. Paul continues with the same theme. We, the old self, were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, meaning through the, the ability, the capacity of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old, our before self, was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, is dead and gone, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. The key phrase, the key passage here is our old self. Our past self was crucified, meaning put to death, once and for all. That verb is past tense, a completed event. As stated here in Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ, and I, meaning that past self, no longer lives, or no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me meaning I am now a new creation in Christ with that new spirit, that new Holy Spirit inside me and that heart of Christ living in me. And also note, as noted earlier, the new spirit that's within us gives us this capacity of discernment. So we actually can see sin for the first time for what it truly is. So when we make a mistake, not if we make a mistake. When we sin, that heart and that spirit will convict us and encourage us to repent and cleanse ourselves of that sin. Now Paul goes on. Now if we died with Christ, we we believe that we will we have faith that we will also live with and in and through him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. We speak a lot about the cross because that's where our sins were dealt with by Christ. But we also need to focus on the reason we celebrate Easter. Not because of the cross, but because on the third day, just as was promised in the Old Testament, on that third day, Father God conquered death. He raised Jesus from the grave. And he's promised to do the same for all of us. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead. He is, is the first of the great harvest, you and me, of all who have died. We were dead in our sin and now have eternal life, eternal life in Christ. And therefore, we should have no fear of death. Now Paul gives us another amazing assurance of this salvation. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all, once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. It is finished once and for all. Jesus made this clear statement about our salvation. No one can snatch us from the loving hands of Christ. Now, Paul will close this theme with a uh, more encouragement. In the same way, in the same way, count, count yourself dead to sin. 
but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So what does it mean to count yourself? It means to appreciate, to reflect on, to have a mindset and to behave upon the confidence and understanding that our old self is indeed dead and we are a new creation. To celebrate, to have joy, that no, that sin no longer holds, holds sway over us, no longer controls us. We are indeed free. Paul is saying we should wake up every day with a smile and an attitude of gratitude that Christ is in our lives with that new heart and that new spirit. And that you and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us each and every day. We shall close there. Until next week, we shall finish up chapter 6. Until then, may God bless you and bless your family with both his grace and his peace. Aloha.